Hello, Geminis. How are we all doing out there, Geminis? Are we having a good April? Are you ready to find out your love connection information for the beginning of May, from May 1st to the 15th, 2020, and moving forward, but concentrating on those two weeks first. So, for anyone who's new, welcome. My name is Kelly. Thank you for joining Deep Soul Tarot. And anybody who's returning, welcome back. Good to have you back, my beautiful tribe. Uh, if you aren't part of the tribe, do subscribe and join the tribe. And on that note, if you don't know, this is my little assistant, Remy. He's a very important part of the Deep Soul Tarot tribe. And he's just here simply to remind you to subscribe and join the tribe. And Remy! And hit the bell icon for notifications! Woohoo! Thank you. He is an awesome assistant. Oh, Lord have mercy. I just scratched myself on my arm and I'm bleeding. Um, I'll take care of that in a minute. He's an awesome assistant. All I do is give him a piece of cheese. I don't have to pay him or anything. He is so low maintenance. So, I give him a piece of cheese and we're good to go for the day. Pardon me while I... I can you see my arm there? I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's I scratched something and I don't know what I did. But now I got a blob of blood there. Okay. All right. Taking care of, I don't know, it's probably still bleeding yet. Yeah, who cares? All right. <laughs> all right, Gemini. So, this is a general read. So, this may not resonate for all of you. So, just keep that in mind. But just take what resonates, leave what doesn't. You know, and if this doesn't resonate for you, you might want to check the other placements in your chart. Um, they may resonate more than this one. If you don't know the uh, placements in your birth chart, then I have a link down below in the description box you can uh, uh, click on. And you can enter your birth date, and it will give you your full chart. If you know your birth time, it's even better. It'll give you an accurate reading of your rising sign. But you can just enter midnight, and it'll give you a general idea. But it's better if you know your birth time. But if you don't know your birth time, don't worry about it. You can still get your full chart. It's just your rising sign is a little, you know. Um, hold on, I'm just still going <laughs> to... Oh. I forgot I was eating a granola bar and it was still sitting there. All right, I don't like to have this blob of blood on my arm when I'm doing the reading, so. Um, anyways, and if you don't want to use that link, uh, you can just Google it. You can Google, what it, you know, find my birth chart or whatever, and that would come up. There are different sites that come up, so it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, and if this does, even if this does end up resonating, um, sometimes you can get more information with your other um, placements. In your chart. So this reading is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, and Mars. But because it's a love reading, uh, I would say focus more on your Venus, your Sun, and then your Venus. And then beyond that, I would do your Moon. And, and again, if you know your Rising sign, then your Rising sign. But sometimes the other signs too can... I'm sorry. I wish I could put something on this. So let's just... Here. We'll just do this while I'm talking. Make it stop. Um... Because Mercury is about communication, so if you're having a problem communicating with your person, you might want to check out your, your placement in your Mercury just to get further information. Um, anyways, so uh, these readings are timeless. Even though it's focused on the time period of May 1st to the 15th, 2020, they are timeless because time is an illusion and energy is fluid. So some of this may have already happened to you. Some of this may be happening as you're watching this video. It's happening to you right now. Or maybe some of this hasn't happened yet and will be happening in the future. You know, you, you just never know. Um, and uh, maybe you're watching this past May 2020. Maybe maybe months on down the line. That's okay. These are timeless. Whenever you see it, click on it and watch it. Is most likely when you're guided to watch it. And if it resonates, that's most likely a message in there for you at that time. All right. Let's see if we can get going here because... All right. Anyways, if you like this, if you like these love readings and, uh, and you like this... In general um give me a thumbs up please smash that like button and i do pay attention to that that's how i determine who gets the readings done first i just figure those are the people who are most interested in love readings so that's why i do it that way um you were somewhere in the middle the fire signs were the first three um you were in the second three so not too bad gemini's so thank you for the support uh and for those who comment 
and like, I pay attention to that too. So I would love to hear from you. Definitely love to hear from you, regardless. Um, and um, and liking it does give me an indication that you like this, or you know you, you want me to continue doing love readings, that kind of thing. And plus, the more likes that are in there, the more views and likes. Those are the ones that would get their that would get their readings first. Uh, you know, I go through the whole thing and I pay attention to every single one. And if you do comment, I do answer the comments. Um, I read every one and I answer them. Sometimes it takes me a bit to get to it because I don't want to just do a half-assed comment back. I want to be able to read a comment and, you know, comment in a, in a sincere way and not just some half-assed, you know, whatever. So sometimes it takes me a couple days, sometimes even three, depending on what's going on. Um, I take some medication at night, so I do a lot of that stuff at night and then... I can't, I mean, it's bad because it makes me really drowsy. And I really don't like taking the medication, but right now I have to. So, 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 hold on, let me just dab this one more time. It's a little better. I'm sorry if you have to see the little blob of blood. Okay, let's do one more shuffle here, Geminis, and we'll get rolling. What's going on? Okay, two, I lied to. I don't know, Spirit just said one more, so I'm doing one more. Okay, now, now I'm going to cut the deck. Okay. You ready? Ready, Freddy? Ooh, the fool. Nice. Nice. You know why? Um, if you're not familiar with the fool, this is taking a leap of faith. It's like you're finally going to let go and you're just going to, you don't know where you're going to fall and you're just going to, and look, the person is, it's a sheep, and I'll get to that in a minute. The person is backwards and they are about to let go of this little twig that they're hanging on to. The stick, well, I guess it's long. Stick, oh, it's in their hand. I guess that's, I don't know what that is. I cannot see. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter, but the person is going to let go and take a leap of faith of some sort. So what I'm hearing, Gemini, is uh, if you haven't met the person, you are interested in finding someone and taking a chance on love. If you have met somebody, in spite of the quarantine, because that's when I am recording this. And if you're watching this during the quarantine, uh, in spite of the quarantine, you are, you, maybe you've met somebody and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, I'd like to take a chance with this person. If it's after the quarantine, well, there you go. You are probably out and about and socializing with this person. If you're a true Gemini, if you like this person's company, you want to spend more time with them. Okay. Let's see what your energy is right now, um, Gemini, as far as this uh, connection. I'm sure you, you know, may have somebody specific in mind. So again, this is May 1st through the 15th of 2020, but it doesn't have to happen within that two-week period. That's just the energy is moving forward into that week and then moving forward from there. So, I mean, you know... Again, just take it as it resonates. Now, if I refer to the cards as he or she... Oh, that wanted to come, but it didn't quite. Um, I'm referring only to the energies of the cards. This, these are not gender specific. There we go, Gemini. These are not gender specific. Okay, so if I say he or she, it's only the energies of the cards. We all have masculine and feminine energies within us. Um, usually we resonate with one more than the other, but regardless of our gender. You could be a female and resonate more with masculine energy, or vice versa. You could be a male and resonate more with... Ew, sorry. Um, with... Um, I just picked up a, never mind, <laughs> you don't want to know this, <laughs> um, you could be a male and resonate more with feminine energy, so the, the, there's no gender specific in here, and just before I start anything, these are not, uh, your sexual orientation has no, it doesn't matter if you're you're straight and you're heterosexual, or um, you're in a same-sex relationship, it does not matter, love is love and a connection is a connection, so I just want to make that clear, this is for everyone, it's inclusive to for everyone, no matter how you identify or whom you're into. Okay. Gemini. Mmm. Oh, boy. Okay. It's not a bad energy, Gemini. And let me do this one at a time here. Ten of Wands. It's just kind of a somber energy. Ten of Wands is carrying, you've been carrying some burden with you. Maybe you've been lonely, you know? You Geminis are social butterflies, and you don't really like to be, I mean, you like your alone time, I know, but you prefer 
flying, fluttering here and there. I call you, you all, you, you Gemini's are the butterflies. You know, one moment you're here, one moment you're there, and you flutter here, you flutter there. Sometimes you come back here, and then you flutter over there. And it's like you're always going somewhere and doing something. <clears throat> and then there are times that you may retreat, but for the most part, you like to be out and about and active and social, usually. Unless you have something else in your chart, but usually. Uh, I, you know, all my almost all my friends are Gemini's. I am not, I'm an, a water sign, but I am drawn to Gemini somehow. You know, I meet people and I'm automatically drawn to their, their vibe. I love the vibe. And then I find out, what, another Gemini. <laughs> My twin flame is a Gemini. Known him for four years. A beautiful, beautiful soul. Um, I, there's just something about y'all. Um, but anyways, but I know for, for a fact that you all like to be not necessarily tied down. You like to keep it light. You like to have fun. You know, but you do have a serious side. I'm not going to say you don't. But for the most part. So you're carrying some sort of burden. But you know what? And well, here I'll, I'll integrate this one in too. And you're feeling kind of left out in the cold. Maybe maybe this isolation is starting to get to you, in a big way. You know, you're feeling left out in the cold. But Gemini, um, you got this once before. This may have been your last love reading. Mercy. Okay, because I distinctly remember saying that you have the key to the answers, the, the question that you you're wondering about, and you got this again, the Five of Pentacles. So. Again, Gemini, um, I mean, you may be looking for an external source to bring you the answers that you want or to bring you some sort of relief. And I understand that you may be restless if you're locked, you know, shelter in place or quarantined, whatever, uh, depending on where you are. It's mandatory where I'm at in California. And I think it's pretty much mandatory m over most of the United States. But uh, again, depending on where you are and what state, what have you. So. You're getting the same type of message. So, you know, you're very wise people, Gemini. You really, really are. You're deep thinkers. You know, you are. Uh, I know you like to keep things light and on the outside. Um, I don't think people realize the depth that you have because, especially with my twin, I mean, I just, it really amazed me, actually, the more I got to know him. And I, I feel lucky that I got to see the deeper parts of him because I don't think you Geminis show that part of you necessarily to everyone. And I mean, we just, we're so comfortable around each other. And even though we're not together, we haven't communicated in a while. His birthday's coming up in June. So I will wish him a happy birthday. We're on good terms. I love him to death. And no matter what happens between us, we're always friends. He will always be my friend. And I only wish him the best because he's a beautiful person. Um, and the majority of you Geminis are, you know, uh, it's from my perspective. I mean, some people may not agree with that, but I do. I have Gemini on my chart. I have a Gemini Jupiter. So there you go. And I have a Libra Mars, so I have air in my chart. Um, but anyways, you are deep thinkers. So you may not think, I know you have a hard time making decisions. You know, that's just kind of a Gemini thing. I think that's an air sign thing. Because my Libra friend said she that's the worst part about being a Libra is she can't make decisions. So maybe that's just kind of an air thing because it's hard to pin, you know, you don't want to be too tied down with one thing, you know. Which, you know, that's, I think find that as a good quality sometimes. But sometimes you can be a little indecisive. Maybe you don't trust yourself to make the right decision. Gemini, trust yourself to make the right decision. It may take a little soul searching, okay? But whatever, you're carrying some sort of burden. So you may have some excess baggage right now that you need to unload first. And it seems, for this particular card, it seems like you've been carrying it for quite a while. But guess what, Gemini? It's time to just really put that crap down. You know, you don't like to be weighed down. This is, this is not a good thing for you. It's not a good thing for anybody, but you, you in particular, Geminis, who like to be free and, and you're more like the, um, well, you're more like the full energy. You know, it's kind of like, uh, go with the flow and, um, a little more spontaneous, travel lightly. You can go here, you can go there. Um, you just don't really like having all this baggage, but something's weighing you down right now, but it's the 10 of wands, which means it's the end of something. So, the, obviously, the next card, if you're familiar with Tarot, is the Ace of Wands. So, it's like you're ready to put down the baggage. If you haven't yet, let's work through that. Do a little soul searching. Figure out what's, what's weighing you down. And just deal with it and let it go. Let it go. If you're on the side of the road, just dump it on the side of the road. <laughs> Whatever. Flush it down the toity. <laughs> um, dig a hole in the backyard and, and bury it. Um, you might deal with it. And then get rid of it and bury it. So it doesn't exist anymore. So what I'm hearing with this particular, because you feel left out in the cold, um, I'm hearing that you're lonely, but 
I'm, I'm hearing that it's more like a, a sense of not knowing what to do. So, although we're in, if you're watching this during the quarantine, I'm recording this at the end of April, um, regardless of the quarantine, because you could be watching this past that, there's something that you are almost isolating yourself because you're dealing with stuff. So I think those are the times that Gemini and I will withdraw. And they've got too much going on. And I know your mind's going a mile a minute a lot of the times. You're always thinking about stuff. So you're trying to deal with this stuff. But you're willing. With This is the main energy, though. I'm thinking that you either have already gotten rid of this excess baggage and dealt with it. And you did find some sort of innovative idea of how you want to move forward. And you're ready. You're ready to, to take a leap of faith. And, and I'm, it's, this is a love reading, so... You're ready to take a chance on love again, I'm hearing. All right. Let me just see very quickly. Oh, I already shuffled it. Never mind. I, I'm not ready yet, so I'm not taking those. So what was on the bottom of the deck, Gemini? And I was trying to hope I could find the, <coughs> the card was the Four of Wands. Damn it, where'd it go? The Four of Wands. I wanted to show you the card. I mean, I know what the meaning... Oh, here we go. There it is. So it's already in the top there. It, this was on the bottom. Okay, the Four of Swords. You just need to take... Uh, you're already in quarantine, yes, and not be able to go out and about. But what this is saying is just kind of be alone with your thoughts. Swords are all about thoughts. Swords are the air signs, okay? And um, so you have the Five of Swords, which is, you know, and the Four of Swords. Take some time alone. Oh, no, it's Five of Pentacles. I'm sorry. Take some time alone with your thoughts. And... Listen to your heart. I know that the air signs are more cerebral and make decisions. They they try not to get too tapped, too too caught up in the emotions, and they try to make a more logistic or logical from their brain cerebral decision, if you will. Um, but just um, not that you're not in touch with your feelings, but sometimes you have a hard time dealing with the emotional side of things per se. I'm thinking, listen to your heart. I'm hearing that the song "Listen to Your Heart" by Roxette. Listen to your heart. When he's calling for you or she's calling for you, listen to your heart. Is there somebody you're drawn to? Is there somebody you already know? And maybe you're wanting to get together with them? Maybe start something with them? I know you guys like to take it slow, so hang out with them first and then see. But listen to your heart. What's your heart telling you? So that was what was on the bottom of the deck for your two cards here. Gemini. So I just put that back in the middle and we're going to see your person now. If any of uh, the major arcana or court cards come out with a specific astrological sign, I will point it out, but in no way means that that has to be who you're dealing with. And they, they may have that in their chart. So their sun sign may be different. They may have that aspect in their chart. Maybe you have it in your chart. Um, or maybe this is just that kind of energy that they have. Well, there you go. The emperor. Aries. So it's very possible you may be dealing with an Aries. Um, with the Emperor, yeah, Gemini, I think you've got this under control. Oh, wait a minute. This is your person, though. Hmm. Well, let me just see what other card comes with that. Justice. Interesting. So you could be dealing with the Libra. Justice is the Libra card. So, so far we have Aries and Libra, but again, it does not have to be that particular sign. I'm just pointing that out because here they are. Um, what I'm hearing is the person you're dealing with has their life like under control. They're very a balanced person. Um, I think they, I'm hearing that they're a very genuine person. Um, justice is all about the truth, balance. Um, they're very in touch with themselves. You know, it's like this is a self-reflection. Um, and when they are out of balance, they kind of will withdraw. They'll step back and they'll try to get their their life or things in their life in balance before they move forward. So they've got a good control on um, their life in general. I mean, it's not, not perfectly... And the bottom of the deck, yeah, two of wands. So you know what I'm hearing right now, Gemini, is this person, maybe they're in the process of getting their life together somehow. 
getting things under control, putting all their ducks in a row, if you will. They're very strong-willed. They're a very um, courageous person. And that's why, you know, the Emperor is Aries card. So that's a fire sign. Of course, Justice is a Libra, which, if you don't know, is, a, is an air sign. I'm just saying that for those who don't know. I'm sure probably a lot of you already know that. Um, but, you know, some people don't. So we've got to point those things out. Um, so the person, um, the, the person, whoever your person is, they go after what they want. When they want something, they will go right for it. And they're not going to poo-poo around. They're going to be straightforward about it. So, I mean, you may already know that this person likes you or likes being around you, has already stated their feelings for you. I don't know if it doesn't indicate, but I don't know, and only you would know if you've been involved with this person before. Um, they're very in touch with both their intellectual, uh, so their thoughts and their emotions, especially when it comes to love. They're not really a person who wavers in that. They know what they want and they know what they want to go after. So I think if they, this, your person, if they meet someone and if this, you haven't met this person, this person has known from the get-go that they liked you as a whole. And um, at the bottom of the deck is the two of wands. So I'm thinking that they, I am hearing that they are thinking about you. And they are now contemplating kind of which path they want. I'm hearing they are a free spirit. So they just, I mean, Aries can be impulsive, but I think with the justice card, it kind of balances it out. So it's like Aries is fueled by, they're a fire sign, so they're fueled by passion. So they're going to go right for it. Sometimes they go for things though too quickly, and then they don't think about it beforehand and then they're in a, in a connection or relationship and then they kind of after a period of time go mm, maybe that wasn't the best idea but Gemini they have also have the justice card which I think the justice card is again the Libra which is the scales as you can see the scales um they oh, I'm sorry there's a shadow in here I'm sorry it's kind of dark over here um they kind of weigh the pros and cons before so I'm thinking this justice card kind of tones down the emperor card, the um, the need for so much control, the need for um, the impulsiveness. The justice card kind of balances that out, which is kind of nice because you, this person, I think, with the two of wands is trying to really beforehand think about they're really into you. They feel a connection with you. There's a passion between the two of you, I believe. And the justice card is them thinking, okay, hmm, now, do I want to stay single? Do I want to possibly get in a relationship? I really like the Gemini. I really like Gemini. And just as a side note, if there are any cross watchers, hello, cross watchers, um, these roles can be reversed. So if Gemini, this isn't resonating for you, this could be your other person's energy. And same with cross watchers. If this isn't your energy cross watcher, or your Gemini's, it, it could be yours, it could be Gemini's, it just depends. So, you know, take that into consideration. But the two of wands is they're thinking about you and they're trying to make a decision. They, I think they do know that they like you and they are into you, but they're just trying to decide without being too impulsive. They want to make sure that they're ready for a relationship. Or do they want to stay single? Maybe they have other things they might want to do, travel, I don't know. Let's see what we can get as far as your connection between the two of you. So, okay. And this, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Gemini. Hmm. Let me just, well, let me show you the cards first. So we got the three of swords and the high priestess. All right. Let's start with the three of swords here. So, um, so these two cards here I see as the connection between the two of you, but can also indicate any blockages or obstacles. So, Gemini. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to feel if this is your energy or theirs. Somebody just went through some sort of breakup or um, heartbreaking experience. Some sort of, I mean, very hurtful, agonizing experience and because it's the 
there's a heart, even though it's the three of swords, which is about the thoughts. This is about many times, or not most times, many times, a love situation. One of you has had a broken heart. And I'm hearing in the near past, something has broken your heart. With the high priestess, though. The High Priestess is a very spiritual, powerful, all-knowing being. She's very mysterious. And Gemini, okay, so the High Priestess, let me continue that thought and then I'll continue. I hope I don't forget my other thought. The High Priestess, again, is an all-knowing spiritual being and she is kind of like the the in cahoots, if you will, the right hand person of spirit in the universe. So the high priestess is only going to reveal to you things, and again, she, female, yeah, female, feminine energy, regardless of your gender, uh, she will only reveal things when she feels you are ready, when you have done the work, maybe learned some lessons that are, are necessary for you on this path. I mean, we all have karmic lessons in life to learn. We're all on our separate journeys, and Nothing is ever perfect, and there are things that happen in our lives to help us along, to teach us lessons, so we can move on to the next road, the next phase, the next chapter, however you want to put it. So what I'm hearing very distinctly here, Kevin, I, I'm thinking this is you. Because I don't feel any negative energy over here. You have the Ten of Wands and the Five of Pentacles, which is, again, the burden and the feeling left out in the cold, or some sort of feeling isolated somehow. And I'm thinking that you, Gemini, have gone through some sort of heartbreak, some sort of hard situation that has broken your heart, or you're almost afraid, I think, maybe to possibly get involved again so you don't have another broken heart. So what I'm hearing here, with the full heart being taking a leap of faith, and again, um, remember I said, oh, crap, my nail broke, and I don't mind, I don't care, but it's... Now it's all jagged. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, the Five of Pentacles, remember I said, you had it in the last reading, and this time you have the key to open the door. You have the answers within. Well, and to to do some really deep soul searching, well, many times, Geminis, because you are cerebral and make decisions from from a logical standpoint, from, from the mind, um, what I'm hearing here is the High Priestess in the Universe and Spirit is saying, you need to really tap into um, your intuition. The high priestess is very much about intuition. See how the, the person, she has her eyes closed, and it's like this is where all the energy is. This is where the answers lie. That's the key to open that door. Okay? So, I mean, you had that four of pentacles, which was, if you recall, that person that was in the nest. Um, that is somebody meditating and get in touch with their internal self to kind of recharge and get some answers. And looky here, Four of Wands. That's celebration. Two people here. I mean, you could be with friends too, but you got two people. One person's got a tambourine, free and easy. So you need to get rid of some sort of internal baggage right now. You, you're you're still dealing with some sort of um, emotional heartbreak, some some sort of emotional baggage, I think. Here, Gemini. So, and the, just in case you aren't aware, if you are on a twin flame journey, Gemini. Or some sort of soulmate, soul connection, but particularly twin flame. The Four of Wands is very much in the Tarot, a twin flame card. I do twin flame readings also. Again, as I said, I'm on a twin flame journey myself. Four years now. Uh, it's not an easy ride for any of you who are on it. 11-11. And just to point out also that the Emperor in the Tarot is indicative of the Divine Masculine. Alright, so... It uh, does not have to be. This is just a general love read. But if you are on a twin flame journey, this could very well have to do with your divine masculine, your twin. And this is spirit saying that you were in some sort of karmic situation. There was a lesson to be learned. Um, and now it's time to let that go, to work through it and let it go. Don't ignore it because you're going to carry that with you. You have to be present with your emotions and acknowledge them at least. And however you may process emotions and, and try to work through it and let that go. So then you can have that freedom of taking that leap of faith and it's not going to be weighing you down. All right, so let's get a couple of cards just kind of as a, an outcome or a, a, I'd say moving forward. 
So, I mean, it's for this energy is for the first two weeks of May. But um, I'm going to say moving, moving forward, but maybe at the end of the two weeks, some advice about moving forward in this connection. But what I was going to say about the karmic, we have in a twin flame journey, if you're not familiar with it, um, you have a lot of karmic lessons to learn. You know, and you can go from, you know, lifetime to lifetime. Um, so, you know, it could be a past life. And um, you, you'll you keep repeating the process until you learn the lessons. And, you know, um, if you're on a twin flame journey, then um, in order to, um, because your connection with your twin flame is not so third world, um, you know, being together necessarily on earth, but it's a spiritual connection. So you're in tune with each other. And working through these lessons in a more spiritual realm. Um, but in order to even have the possibility of coming into union in the third dimension on earth at any time. You have to work through these lessons that you have to. These karmic lessons. And they're not always pleasant. Some of them can be very, very harsh and very, very hard. It's not an easy journey. And anyone who's on it will know that. Um, but in order for you to, every time you learn the lessons and you work through what you need to work through, spirit will know, high priestess will know, and that's when they say, okay, next leg of the journey, next chapter, which brings you and ultimately your twin closer together, closer to union. But this is a love reading. This is not just about twin flames. All right. So this, here we go. We're just going to, those birds, did you hear that? Those birds freak me out. Because it sounds like they're in pain. I don't know. That was, didn't sound good. But anyways, I'm not going to pay attention to that. You have the tower. Um, you have the tower here, um, Gemini. Something has fallen apart. Or do you feel like you're falling apart? Are you falling apart internally? Tower card usually indicates something, and it can be drastic. It doesn't always have to be, but something falling apart. But the, the thing about the tower is in order to move forward, something has to literally fall apart in order for you to rebuild. Okay? So, um, mm, yeah, you got the Three of Pentacles. Now, the Three of Pentacles is a positive card. So what I'm hearing here, Gemini, is you haven't quite you haven't quite mastered the situation or yourself yet. And the rough thing about that, this is a positive card. So this is Spirit encouraging you to do the work yourself. So you need to master yourself and master the situation before you can move forward to another to another person or to love however you want to put it connection but you're willing to take a leap of faith that's a good thing you're open to that so this full card to me is the general energy which is a positive that's a positive energy so although there's a lot of stuff here that may feel heavy because it does feel heavy i'm not feeling that that is you have the ability to turn that around gemini Okay, and it may take some work, you know, you're going to have to deal with probably some unpleasant emotions. Some things are going to come up to the surface. You're not going to want to deal with that. Don't push it back down. Let it come out. Let it come out and start getting rid of that baggage. You got, you got some demons or something in there, something going on. And if you don't do the work yourself, at some point, spirit's going to say, you know what? We're just going to do it for you. You know, maybe you're still in a karmic relationship. I don't know. Maybe spirit is saying that you, you need to get out of it. I don't know. I'm not sure. But what the, this is saying here is in order to move forward, because this is moving forward, you have to master yourself in the situation. You're almost there. You know, teamwork. Work with spirit. If you have friends that are like mentors to you or people that you feel you can trust or comfortable with, maybe you can talk it through with them, you know, because this is about teamwork, you know, but this can be also your mind, body and spirit. Work through your thoughts. Work through your emotions. What you know, Dig deep into your soul and do some soul work. That is a shadow work. When you deal with stuff that's dormant within you, maybe you're not even aware that's there, or maybe you know it's there, but you just don't want to deal with it. And now we're in quarantine. Good time to do it. Okay, bottom of the deck. Nine of Wands, gems. And I know you guys kind of stress and maybe have anxiety because you overthink things, but you got the Nine of Wands under here. That is, oh, Lordy B. Okay. 
Let's work with the Nine of Wands and I'll show you the card underneath. The Nine of Wands is stress, anxiety, uh, possibly sleepless nights, um, insomnia, maybe even nightmares. Underneath that card, you have the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is, if you look at the picture, can you see this person down here? This is the person, so this would be you, and this is what they see. These are their thoughts. Again, the swords are the thoughts. And you're an air sign, so the swords are Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, you, your thoughts are keeping you stuck in, you feel trapped. You feel trapped somehow. But it's your thoughts that are keeping you trapped. You just need to... Uh, Readjust those thoughts, per se. I'm trying to think of the right word. Readjust. Um, because those thoughts are keeping you trapped in your situation. So you want to take this leap of faith. You want to. But I think your thoughts are keeping you trapped. And now you have the two of swords. Again, thoughts. You don't want to make a decision. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to make a choice. You're being pulled in two different directions. And you've got your arms up in self-defense like, no, 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 no. I just don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with this right now. But you're going to have to deal with it at some point, Gemini. Yeah, no. And just very briefly, I'm just going to show you these two cards, and then we're done with this, and we'll clarify. It's the Queen of Cups. Now, that, that could be a water sign. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Does not have to be, though. I'm hearing that you are being kind of engulfed in emotion, and you're having these internal battles. And again, it's I think it's all about... You may have other people involved. That you're having a hard time making a choice. But you have to go into your heart and, and what does your gut tell you? Because you have to do what's right for you. Ultimately, you have to do what's right for you. You know, otherwise you're going to be caught in these karmic lessons over and over and over. You don't want that, right? Five of Wands, you're having these internal battles, you know, and it's just, it's driving you crazy. And you're just stressing yourself out. You're caught up in your head going, what do we do? What do I do? Don't want to do this and then I want to do that. And you know how it is, Gemini. Because you are overthinkers. I'm an overthinker too, but I'm a water sign. But I overthink everything. You know, I start off with one thing and then I have a zillion other things that pop into my head. And then, well, you know, I've created like 10 more problems in my head that probably shouldn't even be there. All right, Gemini, we're going to start with your Five of Pentacles and Ten of Wands. I don't know why I thought it said wheels. That's weird. It looks like wheels from here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we got the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords, first and foremost, is a very fast-moving energy. Wanting to move forward no matter what. No matter what the consequences are moving forward. Hence, the card is almost an irresponsible or irrational type of energy. That you just want to move forward. You don't want to have to deal with things. I don't want to have to deal with it. I just want to move forward. That's not a good thing because then you create more problems. There are things you don't deal with. There are things you may miss. Um, basically this, the, the knight of swords, so the swords again, so that air, knight, court card, air sign, again, you, Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, um, your thoughts are fueling your, and these are irrational thoughts, are fueling your, the knights are about action. Passion and action. They're more. The knights are more about fire, fire signs. So it's more about action and passion. And your thoughts are fueling that, but they're not rational thoughts. Like the justice card over here is a little bit more balanced and rational. So although this, your person, who I mean, they may be a fire sign again. They could be an Aries or a Libra, vice versa. But um, they may, that may be tamed down by the justice card being here. And they may very much, they may be an air sign, I mean, a uh, fire sign. They may be an Aries. And they may have Libra in their chart, so that kind of mellows it out a little bit. So they're not so as impulsive. Here, on the other hand, though, um, I mean, you are an air sign that soars, but the action is not, it's the pushing forward too soon, too fast is not the best idea. There you are, Gemini. There's the lover cards. You're having a hard time with making a decision. And although this can be choosing between two people, this can this is very much it's also a twin flame card, just so you know. It's card number six. The lovers, twin flame card. But this is your sign. This is your card, Gemini, in the Tarot. Um so they're speaking directly to you here. Um I see this as 
This is the feminine energy and the masculine energy. Okay? The masculine energy is, again, I'll repeat, is in his, his more cerebral, uh, logical, analytical, about making decisions, up in the head, the thoughts. Whereas the feminine, of course, is more intuitional, more emotional, being in touch with the feelings. You need to embrace what you're feeling inside. Your feelings, your, what your heart really wants. King of Pentacles underneath. Pentacles are Earth signs. Taurus, Virgo, uh, Capricorn. Pentacles are a lot slower energy. They're more analytical. They take their time to make a decision. They can be in touch with their feelings. They won't necessarily act on their feelings impulsively. They're not fueled by that. But they, they're more grounded. So the Earth signs are much more grounded. This King of Pentacles knows what he wants. But look how relaxed he is sitting on the throne. He knows he will get what he wants eventually, and he's willing to wait for it. So he's not imp he's not going to be acting impulsive and make any mistakes. Not that you have to be so rigid like that, so, so say that you don't want to make any mistakes, because well, this uh, full card is not like that. The full card is kind of like, go with the flow spontaneous. Take a leap of faith. Um, air signs, I mean, uh, earth signs are not into taking chances like that. They kind of like to know what the outcome will be. Um... You air signs are a little more spontaneous. So let's see what your person with the um, Emperor and the Justice card. What can you tell me, spirits? This one and this one doesn't want to come too. Okay. So you got the page. That they got the Page of Swords here. Your person. The Page of Swords is okay. Again, court card. And could be, because this is Libra, you could be dealing with the Libra or another air sign, another Gemini or another or Aquarius. But it, again, it doesn't have to be. The Page of Swords is very inquisitive, gets down to the nitty gritty. Basically, I call this card is getting past the bullshit. All right. So your person may be kind of a matter of fact person saying, you know, don't F with me. Okay. Um, you know, I'm willing to give you a chance, but I'm going to check you out. Uh, they may be they may be the type of person who will um, they're kind of like a spy can be like a spy they can look on your social media see what you got on there and um, see if you're like a player to see if you you know are a sincere person really they will get down to the nitty gritty they're not going to put up with any bullshit so you're going to have to be uh, really think about. I mean, if you have someone in mind, this person is genuinely into you. They've got good integrity. They're a very passionate person, but they're also balanced. Um, so the Eight of Pentacles is, is um, they may be very into their work, or they've done their own self-work, because the Eight of Pentacles is all about work. It can be monetary, um, and there are cobwebs here. So this person has either been working with on themselves for a very long time, it's taken him a long time to get to this balanced, that's what I'm hearing, this balanced um, area in their life. They finally got it together. They're still working on it. They're still working on themselves. But they're going to concentrate on themselves, so they're not going to put up with any BS. Okay? Whoops, sorry. And um, they're ready to choose a path. They're ready to choose which way they want to go. Uh, so it's up to you, Gemini. Uh, what you want to do. This is a lot longer than I intended, Gemini. Oh, look, it went right to the trash. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's not cool. You got the star card. This is your connection here with the high priestess and the swords. You got the star card. This is about self-healing and self-love, a purity of the self. You have to purify yourself, your thoughts, your heart, your soul, before you can move forward. But this is the wish fulfillment card. So you can have what you want. And this is Aquarius. So if you're dealing with an Aquarius, there's your air sign. Besides Libra, there's Aquarius. You have all the air signs here. Uh, you had the, it's not here, and it was on the bottom of the deck. But Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra are all, we're all here. Two were here, and one was on the bottom. So you may be dealing with another air sign. All right. Um, so let's get the card clarifying. The, and on the bottom of that is the abundance card. So you can have everything you want, but there is a lesson for you to, to learn before you can have all this. You can have, you can have what you want, and this could very well be the person to give it to you in the love situation. The Tower and Three of Pentacles, please, Spirit. What can you tell me about that? I'm feeling positive energy, Gemini. That's the interesting thing here because. There's some negativity under it, but you have the ability to turn this around. It's all up to you, really, 
Um, this person's got their life going on. They would like you to be a part of it. But they're in a place where it's like, you know, it's okay if you don't want to be with me. I'll just move on and keep working on and doing my thing. But they would like to, uh, you know, be your partner in crime. You got, the, you got the moon card as far as moving forward. Um, the moon card is very much about, again, mystery, um, the subconscious. You're in the dark about something. You may be illusioned about something, but I think you're illusioning yourself. You're not seeing something. You're not seeing something within yourself or about your situation. But the moon, good thing about the moon card is, and the moon can be about emotions too. Um, the good thing about the moon card is that with the moon, with darkness, there's always light. So no matter how much you may feel in the dark, maybe you're missing something right now. But in the moon card could be Pisces, or I believe this is, I don't know if that's a crab, but it's, I think it's supposed to be a Pisces card, but Cancer is ruled by the moon, so ruled by the moon. So you could be dealing with a Cancer also, but it doesn't have to be. I'm I'm feeling very much to pay attention to your dreams. I'm hearing that your dreams can tell you something. You're feeling a little apathetic and just, you know, the spirit is trying to offer you this cup, saying, "Come on, Gemini, just open your eyes. Just open your eyes. We have a nice, full, brand new cup for you. Just open your eyes." So I'm, talk, I'm I'm hearing to be very honest about your situation and yourself, you know, uh, just do some soul searching, you know. All right, let's get a sacred destiny card. Sorry, this is longer than I anticipated. We'll get a sacred destiny card here, Gemini. What can you tell our beautiful Geminis out there, you know, kind of to help them to move forward. These are all one word cards. So. And this one, there's the purity card. Mm. And I'll show you the bottom of the deck. The purity cards. The purity card to me, that signifies to me purifying again. Your thoughts, your heart, and your soul. It's almost like doing a deep clean. You know, like a spring cleaning or a deep clean. Um, it's time to just flush your system out of any negativity, any of those negative emotions. It may take a little time. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, so don't get frustrated if it's like, well, hell, I tried to flush it out, but, you know, the next day it still felt crappy. Then you still need to do it. You still need to work on it. You know, these things don't happen overnight. But guess what? By doing that, you're opening up a whole new gateway to not only just love, but a better future. But I'm hearing that a beautiful connection. By purifying yourself and getting rid of all that yuck, you know, the dirt, the gunk, whatever. <laughs> it's almost like cleaning out a, a drain, you know. You may get a clog in the drain and you do like to put a little chain down there and clean out the clog and all of a sudden the water runs, fl it flows through it much better. You don't get that clog. That's what I'm hearing here, Gemini. I know, it's a little goofy, but it's just kind of like, you know, clean it out, you know. Your clothes get a little stinky after a while if you don't wash them. Put them in the washer, maybe in the dryer, put a little softener in there. It smells peaty. There you go. <laughs> Um, I don't know, Gemini. This is the Sacred Traveler's card. So this one's kind of moving forward. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you did like this, Gemini, um, and if this resonated and you like these, these love readings, please do smash the like button. I lost the card. I don't know where it went. I very much appreciate it. Well, damn it, this is going to take more time for me to find the damn card. Where the hell did it go? Oh, well, never mind. I used to have a roommate. I shared a room with someone, and it shot under her bed. She's no longer here. Unfortunately, but, uh, you know, ascending the mountain, keep moving forward. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. It may be a long journey and it may be a long haul. You see how this person that was only walking with a walking stick, he got nothing else on. He just has his cloak and his walking stick. That's all you need. You just need your walking stick. And I know you Gemini's are, like I said, you're like butterflies. You travel light. Get rid of that excess gunk. Get rid of those... The, the emotional baggage or those negative thoughts. You know, it's hard sometimes, but try to flush out that negativity. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Purify your soul. Focus on the positive. Focus on the positive. When you focus on the positive, you put that out into the world, it's going to come back to you. You know, you focus on the negative. Unfortunately, that's going to come back to you too. And I know it's not easy, but you can do it. You can do it, Gemini. You're really good about getting past, it, I think, getting past situations and moving on to something else. So, far away places. Get ready for new horizons. Wow. Because, you know, this quarantine thing, if you're watching this during that, is happening now and holding a lot of us back. A lot of us. Pretty much all of us. But just remember that you're ready for new horizons. Maybe when this is all over, you can go on a trip. You know? Whether it's with your person, 
with friends, or maybe it's just you, yourself. And you can come back with a clear mind, and you'll know exactly what you want. And, you know, through that, maybe you've learned that lesson. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Time for me to get a drink. And I don't mean alcohol, unfortunately. I could go for a little pina colada, though. Uh, it's a little warm here in California. <laughs> but I just have coffee and water, so that's what I got. Um, um, okay, so Gemini, this is what I have for you. And I hope this did help help you in some way. And again, if it resonated and you like these type of readings and the style, whatever, the love readings, please do give me a thumbs up. Then I know that you Gemini's like this and you'll be at the top of the, you know, as the the rotation, so to speak, in the love reads when they come out mid-month. Um, subscribe. I encourage you to subscribe, please, and join the tribe. Love to have you here, Gemini's. Would love to have your energy here. Uh, so would Remy. Remy said, me too. <laughs> and hit the bell icon button. So if you want to know your next two weeks, what's going on, or Twin Flame on Fridays, you get the notification. You never know when there's a message in there for you. Comment, maybe your birthday, comment down below. Love to hear from you. And share if you want to. All right. Thank you so much, Gemini's, for tuning in. Thank you all. Love you from the bottom of my heart. Stay safe. Peace out.